Good afternoon. We warmly welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica. Visitors, vacationers, and all newcomers are urged to kindly fill out our special welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket. God's holy word calls us to inclusively welcome others with love as we follow Jesus up to Jerusalem where he will suffer, die, and rise from the dead for all peoples. Today's second collection is for our Holy Father's Peter's Pence, which provides Pope Francis with the financial means to respond in charity to those who are suffering as a result of war, oppression, natural disaster, and disease. As we prepare for today's celebration, we invite you to fully participate in our liturgy by singing from our hymnal. Kindly also introduce yourself to the people seated around you, especially sharing your name with those you've never met. Please stand and join me in singing our opening hymn number 759. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good afternoon. It's wonderful to be with you this afternoon as we're getting revved up, I guess, for the 4th of July with these patriotic songs. 
And as we come to celebrate these saving mysteries, which guarantee us freedom, the freedom of the children of God, we call to mind that by baptism, we have been adopted children of God, called to eternal freedom in the kingdom of heaven. Kindly be seated, because this afternoon we have two baptisms. Monsignor Jerry and my sisters and brothers in baptism of St. Anthony Cathedral Basilica Community, I joyfully present to you our parishioners, Milena Pardo and Marco Cardenas, who asked the church to baptize their children. Have these parents been adequately prepared to make the commitment to raise these children as Catholics? Yes, they have participated in the required pre-baptismal preparations and have made the commitment to continue to guide these children in the ways of Christ's life through active participation in the communal and sacramental life of the Catholic Church. Dear parents, what name do you give to each child? Hazel. Sebastian. Say that again, I'm an old man. Hazel. Hazel. Sebastian. Sebastian. And what do you ask of the church for your children? Baptism. You have asked to have your children baptized, and in doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training them in the practice of the Catholic faith. It is your duty to be the first educators in the faith of your children. The church is here to help you, not to take over your job <laughs> that is given to you by God. <laughs> you are the first teachers of your children in the faith. And how do you do that? You do that by bringing them to Mass every single weekend. And if you don't do it over and over and over and over again, good luck if you're gonna to try to potty train them. It ain't gonna work. You have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Same thing with teaching them how to brush their teeth and use utensils. Mm -hmm. Same way, okay? And to teach them their prayers at home. Don't wait until they're four or five, six years old and then say, okay, church, you know, teach them their prayers. No, parents teach prayers, okay? And have, have images of the saints and especially of the cross, the crucifix of Jesus Christ in your home, so that your children know that they, they, they are part of God's family, okay? Are you willing to take on that awesome responsibility, which is quite simple, actually, yeah, but very, very important? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Are you really? Let's hear that again. Yes, we do. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we do. Let's have a little excitement here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Godparent sponsors, are you ready to help uh, these parents in the rearing in the Catholic faith of Sebastian and Hazel? Yes, yes, we are. That's good. I can hear you. Okay. So we rely upon the help of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we choose Sebastian and Hazel for the glorious sacrament of baptism. I now trace on Hazel and Sebastian's forehead the sign of the cross, which is what we call, we're addressing, it's called consignation, to consign to God, okay? And we ask the deacon to also make that sign of the cross, that address, uh, that they would get to heaven. And parents, 
and godparents to do the same on the forehead of each child? Let us stand and give glory to God for this new life that comes to us through water and the Spirit in the sacrament of baptism. pray. God of the living, in whose image we have been formed, with the imperishable life as our destiny, help us to always follow you and to always do the Father's will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. first reading is from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, you shall anoint Elisha, son of Sapat, of Abel Melola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Sapat, as he was plowing with 12 oxen. He was followed the 12th. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye and I will follow you. Elijah answered, go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to the people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free, so stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love, for the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh for the flesh has desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And, another, and to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, 
But first, let me say farewell to, farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. We welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica. And in a particular way, we welcome all those who are visiting with us from other places, other parishes, other cities, communities, and even other countries. And we invite all those who are visiting with us just to stand for a few brief seconds so that we can give you a loving welcome. All of our visitors, just stand for a second. We won't fight you. Wonderful to have you here. At the end of the Mass, we'll have a special blessing for all of our visitors and for all those who will be traveling during the coming week. And of course, this week uh, being the 4th of July week, there's going to be a lot of people on the roads. And so we pray in a special way for our visitors and our travelers' safety and also uh, for Sebastian and Hazel, they're beginning their, their travel, their, their pilgrimage to paradise by being baptized this day. And so uh, they will be blessed for their spiritual journey uh, throughout life uh, to their heavenly home. On the plaza after Mass, there's a special welcome stand, and there's a gift for all of our visitors uh, to bring home, to deepen your faith and deepen the faith of those who reside with you and also those who come to visit with you. Today's uh, readings uh, are very, very wonderful for child rearing. And they are wonderful for us to recognize how we uh, are called to follow Jesus, okay? There are four points I want to make. There's four images that are so important. In our first reading from First Kings, what we have is Elisha, Elijah, sorry, Elisha, who is the old man, <laughs> the gray, bald-headed guy, okay, that what happens is that he puts his mantle around the young one. That's what parents do. Parents, they put the mantle of their life, their maturity, their understanding of God, and their way of life around their children, okay? The second image that we have is how when Elijah is called that he immediately responds 
And he responds authentically because of the simple fact that it wasn't only Elijah who put his cloak around him, but it must have been also his parents who put the cloak of their lives around Elisha. Because he authentically responded. He said to Elisha, can I go back and, and kiss my parents goodbye? That's the first thing. That was fine because that was authentic. He wasn't making an excuse for himself, okay? And how do we know that? Because we know that Elisha was very, very materially wealthy. We're told in that first reading from 1 Kings that Elisha had 12 yoke of oxen. 12 yoke of oxen means 24 head of oxen. And how do we know that he was authentic about wanting to follow the Lord's prompting in his life? We know because the scriptures tell us he takes all 24 of those oxen and he slaughters them. In other words, he sacrifices them. And when he sacrifices them, he takes the yokes, which are all wooden, and he has a fire. Then he cooks all the meat from all those 12 oxen, and he leaves it behind to take care of his family and take care of his village and take care of his neighbors, okay? He leaves it all. And then he goes to do God's work, to follow God's way. That's very authentic. The third image that we have is we have Jesus very much like the fulfillment of Elisha, where he is in the ninth chapter, it says he has made a resolution. He is re resolute. He is resolute to go to Jerusalem. And as I told Flint, that is a very important uh, theme in Luke's gospel. He is resolute to travel to Jerusalem. What's in Jerusalem? Jerusalem is the place of the temple. What happens in the temple? Sacrifice. But he goes to a different temple hill. He goes to the hill of Calvary, not Mount Moriah. And there on Calvary, for the salvation of all people, he sacrifices himself. He dies. He's immolated for the salvation of all that none of us would be lost. Okay? Make sense? On his way, he says, to three people, or three people say to him, because it's kind of like interchanged, eh? we'll follow you. All three of them, folks, are non-authentic. They are not really talking about sacrificing themselves. They say, I'll follow you but I really don't want to sacrifice myself for you. 
So let me go and do all these other things and these distractions. And you may say, well, you know what? Those distractions kind of seem authentic. I want to let you know, if a dead person is dead, even if the family doesn't bother with the body, somehow we'll, we'll get buried. <laughs> they won't leave it on I-10. <laughs> okay? Authenticity as opposed to non-authenticity about sacrifice. If Jesus' sacrifice is resolute, when he calls us to follow him, he wants us to sacrifice ourselves. Elisha knew how to be authentic because a cloak was thrown around him, not just by Elisha, but also by his folks. He was willing to sacrifice everything. And the fourth, the fourth image that we have is the image of those who are traveling with Jesus and the not authentic in their following him or in their willingness to sacrifice themselves. Why do I say that? Because when they are going through an area that rejects them, and in biblical terms, rejection of people one to another, is called sin. <laughs> it's called sin. The rejection of God by us human beings is sin. When we are so selfish that we turn in our, to ourselves huh, and say, I disagree with you, God. I'll do it my way, even though I'm not Frank Sinatra. That was a joke, folks. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> uh, or when they come against another human being who basically they disagree with, what they say is, uh, I'd like to annihilate you. <laughs> I'd like to annihilate you. So when they're traveling, uh, what happens is they're going by the border of Samaria, huh? Galilee, and Israel. And those people who say, I'm going to follow you, Jesus, and he's re resolute in his willingness to sacrifice himself for all people, <laughs> even those who reject him, <laughs> those who beat him up, those who whip him, those who spit on him, those who crown him with thorns and crucify him to the cross, what happens? He never rejects them. But those who are traveling with him say to him, oh, those people rejected us. Let us throw napalm on them. <laughs> Let's call down fire from heaven on them. <laughs> Let's send some bombs on them and annihilate them. And Jesus looks at them and goes, Eve, you've been with me. <laughs> I've thrown my cloak around you, but you still haven't been listening. You're not willing to sacrifice yourself. Don't you dare huh, injure a little one. You may disagree with them, but don't blow them away. <laughs> and that third image is the cost of discipleship. The cost of discipleship is always sacrifice, 
even when people disagree with you, even when they hurt you, even when they crucify you. Remember from the cross, from the hill of Calvary, which is the hill of sacrifice, Jesus doesn't say, Father, annihilate them. <laughs> he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that brings us to the second, second reading, which is so important. So I ask you to pull out your, your, your book again and uh, be like good Baptist. Let's look at the text, okay? Let's look at the text. It's on page 1019. 1019. Up the top of the page is the second reading. I want you to take a look with me at the second paragraph of Paul writing to the Galatians. He's talking about sacrifice in that community. He's talking about the sacrifice of one human being for another human being. He's talking about not annihilating one another. So let's listen to Paul. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Let's, let us, let, let's take the word flesh and let's put the word in selfishness. Okay? Don't use your freedom for selfishness. Hmm? Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, folks, if you go on biting and devouring one another, be aware that you are not consumed by one another. You're consumed by yourself and your own selfishness. Hmm. So those four images are very important. Important for you as, as, as parents. These two beautiful children, they need a cloak around them. They're the first four meters in the faith. The second thing is, by being baptized, they are called to follow Jesus authentically. Authentically. You're going to teach them not to make excuses. That call for authentic following of Jesus up to Jerusalem, those 10 chapters, 9 through 19 of Luke, is calling us to be a sacrificial gift. And the sacrificial gift is for all people. That means not be selfish. And even if people disagree with us, we follow Jesus and we offer sacrifice giving everything away, being crucified with Christ, so that not only that we can rise with Christ, but that not one of the little ones will be lost. Isn't that what Jesus told us? It's the intention of the Father, that not one of us will be lost. And so, I invite you to bring your children out and to let us stand around you in prayer. 
Come on. Mm -hmm. Face that way. And we pray that you will throw your cloak of love around them, that you will teach them the ways of Christ in the church, uh, that you will teach them how to follow Jesus, that you will show them how to sacrifice yourself for others, even those who disagree with you and may persecute you to lay down your life as Jesus did and has their call to for others. Godparents. We pray for the joy of our universal church. That's all good. For the right. gifts of the Holy Spirit as our diocese awaits the selection and appointment of our next bishop by our Holy Father. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of every nation, our world, especially in the Holy Land, the Middle East, for unity of Christians and for all God's people, for a deepening of our Catholic faith, participation in Holy Eucharist on weekends and holy days, commitment to the new evangelization, and frequent reception of the sacraments, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For inactive Catholics, that they may return to the Eucharist, and for non-Catholics who wish to learn more about our Catholic faith. For the reverence and defense of all human life, religious liberty, all refugees, immigrants, and the displaced people of our world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's mercy on the sick, suffering, dying, poor and powerless, victims of abuse, widows, orphans, elderly and unemployed. For our troops, marriages, families who find life burdensome, and for the falsely accused, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, religious life, and service of our church. For the newly baptized, especially for Hazel and for Sebastian, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, for deceased victims of abuse, all killed by violent acts, and for the comfort of all who grieve. For all our pilgrims, our visitors, travelers, and for the silent intentions of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayer and free Hazel and Sebastian from all stain of original sin. Open their ears that they may hear your holy word. Open their mouths so that they may speak and proclaim your gospel of love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated as Hazel and Sebastian come to the waters of baptism to begin their Pilgrimage to Paradise. Come on, come on with me.
Sebastian. Come on up here. That's good. Mommy, hold him. Turn around this way. <laughs> Put your hands here. Put your hand here. Hold on. Like this. Hold on with that. Hold on with that. Yep. Okay, put your head down. Sebastian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hazel, be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so I anoint you, Sebastian and Hazel, with the chrism of salvation, that as priest you might offer prayer and sacrifice every weekend and every holy day of obligation in the sacrifice of the Mass, that as prophets you might hear God's holy word, live it, and proclaim it with how you live. And that as a citizen of the kingdom, you might have the right to eternal life. Sebastian and Hazel, seeing your white garment, your Christian dignity, with your parents, families, godparents, sponsors, and the entire Christian community, keep this white garment free from all stain of sin until that great day when the Lord himself comes at the end of your earthly journey to bring you to your heavenly home. Dear parents, receive the light of Christ. Receive it from the godparents who now hand you the light of Christ. To, <laughs> to you, not to the kids. <laughs> You're gonna hand it on to the kids, otherwise they might go up in flames, <laughs> okay? Uh -huh. Keep it burning brightly by how you teach them. Pass it on to them so that they may always walk in the light of the Lord. It is my joy to present to you our newest parishioners and newest brother and sister in baptism, Sebastian and Hazel.
We now invite our children to bring their gifts for Jesus and place them in the basket at the foot of the altar. Also, please join me in singing hymn number 558. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this fruit of the fields. The work of human hands will become for us our spiritual food. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this spiritual drink, the, the fruit of the vine. It would become for us your divine blood. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and my brothers in baptism, that the gifts we bring to this holy altar might become the sacrifice which is acceptable to God, our almighty Father. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, our loving Father, we are glad to give you thanks and praise because you love us. Because you love us, you have given us this great and beautiful world. Because you love us, you have given us the great gift of life. Because you love us, you have given us Jesus, your Son, to bring us to you and to gather us around him as the people of one family. For such great love, we thank you with all the angels and saints in their song of praise. Blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be the friend of children and of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away sins, which keeps us from being friends, and hate, which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always, so that we can live as your loving people. God, our Father, we now ask you to send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much you love us. When he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And so, loving Lord, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May this Spirit bring us closer together in the family of the Church with Francis our Pope, Curtis our Bishop, all those baptized into Christ this day throughout the world, especially Sebastian and Hazel and all your people. Remember our families and those who have died. Bring them home to be with you forever. Gather us all together in your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with the Virgin Mary, the mother of God and our mother, with her all good and holy husband, Joseph, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, the martyrs, Saint Anthony, and all the saints. There all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their hearts and pray with the priest for the unity of all God's people. Please join me in singing hymn number 810. Come to the banquet, come to the feast.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrament, sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Pat Brooks and for the comfort of all those who grieve. And please also pray for those baptized this weekend and all our children participating in our Vacation Bible School this Monday through Wednesday from 10 to 1 p.m. in our center. This Thursday, our Vacation Bible Camp children, their families, and everyone are invited to celebrate the 4th of July during our family night at 7 p.m. on our plaza with a grand display of fireworks beginning at, 8 p at 9 p.m. Excuse me. Bring your lawn chairs. Nominations for the Monsignor De Stefano Diocesan Stewardship Award is extended to this Friday, July 5th. Kindly see page six of today's bulletin for details and a nomination form. In observance of Independence Day, our chapel and parish office will reopen on Monday, July 8th. And before leaving, as good stewards of this sacred place, kindly tidy up your pews for the next Mass. Thank you. We invite all of our visitors and all those who are traveling during the coming week along with our newly baptized to, to kindly stand and receive a special blessing. Let's extend our hands in blessing, asking for God's safety in their journey, and especially in the journey of these two little ones who have a long road to go in life, pray God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you safety in your journey. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And through the prayers of the Holy Mother of God, together with all the saints, especially our patron, Saint Anthony, may the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful day and be reasoned. Re, re, uh, have a re, real strong resolve to follow Jesus. Hmm?